Now I'd like to talk a little bit about basic geometry creation and what it means when you create geometry in a certain fashion. It's a very confounding subject for some people. They don't understand what they're creating. They know they're creating a point, they know they're creating a line, something as simple as that, but they don't understand the ramifications of creating geometry in a certain fashion. I want to take a step back and talk a little bit about the right hand rule. Here you can see I have my axis system. If I come in and draw a circle for instance, and I pick this, leave it at center and radius, I'm going to pick the axis origin, and then a support. What happens is, let me, let me grow this to make it a little bigger so you can see it a little better. You can see here's my start point and here's my end point. The start point is at zero degrees and by default it just shoots out 180 degrees. And as you can see it falls along the start point, the x-axis. So the grid, basically the x-y axis, abides by that right hand rule. So here's our 0, here's our 90, 180, 270, 360 revolving around the z-axis. And if we go by the right hand rule once again if we curl our fingers in the direction of making a fist with our right hand and point our thumb along in the z-direction so here's my z-direction, my thumb is pointing up in this direction and my fingers will curl in this direction. This is the right hand rule. This is telling me that that is the direction that this is traveling in. It's starting at zero and moving in this direction. Zero to 180 degrees. So these rules are critical for you to remember when you're creating geometry. Now I took that step back because I want to talk about creating a couple of points I'm going to place a point on here, and I'm going to place another point, same plane. So with those two points, I'm going to generate a line. Now, when I specify this line, I'm going to pick this point first, and I'm going to pick this point second. And this is absolutely critical to the definition of that line. You'll notice that point one and point two, this is my start point this is my end point and it tells you start end. What does this mean? Well if I come in and I'm just gonna generate a plane on this through that perpendicular to that line at that point I'm gonna go ahead and create a circle once again just as you saw me do a moment ago. What is my center point? What is my plane? Okay I don't know where the start and the end points are but as you can see it's going in this direction. It's following the right hand rule. It is going up through that line and that's my thumb and it's rotating around that axis in this direction start to end. If I come in now and create a cylinder for example pull this out there's my cylinder. The inputs that it's asking for are point. So I'll pick this end point and then now I'll pick a direction. You'll notice that it goes in that direction by default. So point and direction. If I come in here and specify this point, the direction remains the same. Now, I'm going to go ahead and delete this and I'm going to delete this line as well get rid of the plane it's fine and this time I'm going to generate that line in the opposite direction I'm going to take this as my start this is my end generate that cylinder pick my point this time I'm going to pick this line and you'll see that it's pointing in this direction so the direction that I pick to create that line generates a vector. That vector is 
critical for you to pay attention to because if you use that line for a die line or a pad direction or extrusion directions or whatever a sweep direction when you're using a draft sweep linear draft sweep or something along those lines that line is going to determine the default positive direction for all of those functions if I were to use a new line and have those vectors switched up I would when if I were to replace it or try to use that new line for a new vector direction for a new sweep the sweeps are going to turn in the opposite direction the normals of the surfaces are going to turn in the opposite directions and what ends up happening is everything is now being built in an opposite direction to the original sweep vector so when I create geometry I want to be very careful about how I create that geometry. If I pick this point and travel in this direction, I want to keep with that. I want to make sure that everything I do from that point travels in the same direction to maintain the proper orientation. And again, the reason why that's important is I'm going to go ahead and generate a spline. Actually, I'll, I'll do it like this. I'll just put a couple of points on this plane. I'm going to make a spline and I'll just pick them out of the tree. And I'm just going to make a adjustment. Let me delete this. I'm going to take this and move this over to here. And I'm going to make a line. Now notice I'm going to pick from point one to point two. So that's my start. That's my end. And now I'm just going to go ahead and make a sweep go into sweep I want to use a line type and with draft direction if I come in here now pick my guide curve pick my draft direction as this line you'll notice that that line is defining a draft direction vector I'm going to preview it okay if I come in there now mind you I pick this is my start point this is my end point if I come in there and draw a line in the opposite direction, same exact line, right? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this line, I'm going to replace it. And what this is going to do is it's going to show me that this vector and this vector do not match. They are opposite because I drew that line in the opposite vector. If I select OK now, you'll notice that the sweep switched over to the other side of that guide. I have now changed the normals of that surface and anything attached to it. So if I have a split, that split will change the side that it's splitting. If I have a join, I potentially change the orientation of the join normal. If I did a trim, same thing, the trims would come up differently. Um, there are ramifications. Again, if I did something maybe with a face blend, where the surface normals are an offset are being considered for that next function or the downstream functions that could potentially affect all my features and make difficult or my edits very difficult in the future so it's important that you pay attention to how you're creating your geometry it's important that you pick things in a logical consistent order now um, as we go through you'll notice that a lot of times when I pick things I'm always picking things from one direction into the next one direction into the next and that's to make sure that everything that I build has a logical consistent flow as well now the UVs of the surface have switched and um, some operators downstream operators may use those UV directions say machining or whatever that could affect how something gets machined depending on what you've done so it's important to pay attention to the simplest little things it's very important to pay attention to how you simply created a line most people have no idea that they're generating a line and that's the direction of the line the same thing with the spline when I generated the spline I went in this direction if I go to this now I'm just gonna pick join I'm gonna pick the spline and just hit preview you'll notice that 
the direction is going in that direction. So this is the direction for that spline. If I were going to use this spline for a multi-section surface, the next spline that I would create, I want to create it so it flows in the same direction. So I don't really have to reverse normals. Or if I change something, it's a bit more stable. I don't necessarily have to start switching things out. So it's very important you understand that your pick direction, your draft directions, everything is based off of how you select the elements, the order of those elements in those selections. So just pay close attention to that and it'll make your modifications in the future much easier. It'll make your changes, edits, replaces easier to manage and maintain.